Hey, hello. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Tupper. Man, we just got pounded with this crazy rain and wind and flipped chairs over out on the deck and I, I, I don't know where it came from, but violent. And um, we'll see what we can do driving back here. It is Tuesday, uh, July the 10th. Sound right? Yep. Uh, had an interesting day today. I drove over to Champaign and uh, sat in on a lunch uh, with uh, a bunch of the fellas, including Lou Henson, uh, Lauren Tate, Kent Brown, Steve Kelly, Mike Kuhn was there, uh, some of the other, Ted Beach, the great Ted Beach was there. Love Ted, really great to see him. Uh, in fact, I believe Ted popped for lunch today. What a kind man. Um, I think it's my turn next time. <laughs> but. Uh, Anyhow, it was, and it was great to see Lou. Uh, Lou was in really good spirits. Um, I, I knew Lou was doing pretty good because he had come to the Kendall Gill golf outing um, the other day and um, was was looking good and feeling good there. He was using a walker, not a wheelchair. Um, and uh, some people at the luncheon today came up and wanted a picture with Coach, and he stood up from his chair and turned around and put his arms around him and posed for a photo. and. You know, the only thing really uh, right now is that Lou's voice is not real strong. So you got to kind of lean in a little bit to hear conversations. But clearly, you know, he loves talking and loves uh, loves people. He's a social guy, man. He he's uh, he's a lot of he was he was a lot of fun to be around. And and so I had a really good visit with Lou. I'm going to write a column about him this week uh, for the Herald and Review. Um, and then after that, I swung by the basketball office. And uh, I really came in unannounced. Um, I know the secretary, Julie Pioletti's getting ready to retire and I wanted to say hi to her. She's a good lady and um, just to appreciate her a lot. And uh, so she's got a couple more weeks and um, sounds like they're planning a, a party for her. Uh, I might try to get over for that and say thanks again. But, um, but Brad Underwood was there, talked to Brad a little bit, uh, ended up talking to Jeff Alexander, Brad's assistant, talked to uh, Jamal Walker. Um, there was nothing going on in the gym, and, um, and the guys are getting ready to head out recruiting. Um, I think they go out starting tomorrow. You know, This is that time when uh, you gotta get out there and evaluate, and a lot of these uh, July uh, events, shoe company events and whatever. But, um, um, we can't watch them right now. Um, when they are in individual drills with coaches on the floor, we, we can't, media can't be watching them. Um, I, I think the possibility for us to see them right now would be um, after those individual events, if, if we happen to be over there and, they, and the players went into a, you know, just a open gym, five on five, scrimmage kind of a thing among themselves with no coaches like then then we could maybe get a peek but um, well I'm gonna keep working on that because I sure want to see them but here's the takeaway that I got from talking to the various coaches they like this group um, they really like this group it's a different group the uh, there's a, a high degree of caring in this group um, I think the competition that Brad envisioned by bringing in multiple good young players is definitely in place. Nobody wants to give up uh, an early edge to another guy that could lead to that guy getting playing time and him not getting playing time. The uh, times that they have gone against each other are very competitive. Um, and uh, they wish the other three were there, um, you know, there's, there was without Samba Kane, uh, they're without Adonis De La Rosa, and they're without uh, Anthony Higgs, and um, those guys will all be there once school begins, And um, but they wish they were there. Um, the surprise probably at this point is Georgie Bazanashvili. Better than they thought. Really can shoot it better than they thought. More athletic than they thought. Big, competitive. They like him. They like him a lot. And um, uh, 
Um, so that was really interesting. Um, they're really, there's, I don't think there's anybody they're not big on. Um, the four guys that are coming back, I have asked several people, you know, hey, name the four guys that are coming back. And everybody names Trent. And people remember Kipper. And they remember AJ, Aaron Jordan. But there's a tendency to forget DeMonte Williams. And that's a mistake. Uh, I'm going to hit some branches here. <laughs> Ouch. I'm kind of driving through some dicey ground here, too. When in the... In the rearview mirror, they see the standing water. This is where that those trees were. Um, excuse me, where the corn was flattened by that flatline wind a few weeks ago. I told you about it. Uh, that has not come back. This is a notorious low spot that often floods right down here. Uh, the creeks over over this way, and um, this water never makes it to the creek. Obviously, some drainage tiles and so forth could be it, but for what it would cost to do it, um, and for the really small amount of corn involved um, I don't know that that's going to happen at least with any priority but now we're going through the corn uh, sort of corridor here you can see how big the corn's getting and the, the, the ears are really forming here when I looked at these ears the other day I mowed here on Sunday a lot of them are nibbled on this is you know this is where you say Illinois get some great white-tailed deer yeah they're corn fed they just sit here and snack on this corn it's amazing and uh, so anyhow um, but um, uh, Georgie uh, DeMonte Williams um, you know he just doesn't do much wrong and he plays really hard and he's healthier and uh, you know remember he hadn't played that for that full year going into last year so this is a um, this is a season where you might see some breakout stuff from DeMonte. Um, and Kipper has leaned up, uh, probably lost 10, 12 pounds uh, quicker. Uh, that's good news. Trent is really competitive. Look, Trent was the kind of the star last year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of guys pushing that want to be the star this year. And he's not going to sneak up on the league and other people. So, um, you know, we'll see there. Um, the other thing is, um, could they add one more player? They have, still have one open scholarship. The answer is yes. Um, not that they will, but that they could if they found the right guy. Um, even if it was a, a good transfer who had to sit out, okay? Um, that's a possibility as well. So when you consider, you know... I'm thinking in terms of another fifth-year guy, um, but I think I would be limiting it more than what they are thinking in terms of. I think the possibility for a good transfer who has decided late he's going to go somewhere else, he knows he'd have to sit out a year, but then could play, um, you know, we'll see. But um, th that's interesting. Um, you know, I had this conversation with Brad today. You, you, you just can't manage your roster the way you used to think that you could. More and more guys transfer. More and more. It's become really sexy to test the draft waters early. And you don't know who's going to go or who's going to, you know, maybe do something. I, I was asking about Laron, and we all know Laron is, is going pro. Um, he was looking at a couple of deals, one in Brazil and um, one in maybe Belgium. You know, I mean, those are two very different deals. I don't think either of those are going to initially pay as much as I thought they could. Um, but, you know, Laurent's issue is gonna be what Laurent's issue always is. He's, you know, he's not a passer. He's a, he's a six, seven, he's, he's six, seven. And six, seven is what they like their point guards, excuse me, their shooting guards to be not really what they like their five men to be. And um, now, can I get around this branch here so it tears a hole in my roof? I guess so. <laughs> and um, so we'll see what happens with him um, if, he, if he does finalize some kind of a deal. It sounded like he was maybe getting close and had his pick between a couple. So um, 
it was a, I had a really good visit over there today. I appreciated those guys taking a little bit of time to talk to me, and um, um, couldn't have been nicer. And, and again, it was uh, really enjoyable to see Lou and um, to see him smiling and moving around pretty good. Said Mary's doing well, and um, um, he's an amazing guy. He was he was um, diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma almost 15 years ago. And it has been an up and down battle. And I don't think people understand how perilous some of the downs have been. Um, they've been some scary moments. And that guy just keeps fighting. I think the fact that he likes living so much, he likes people so much, he likes, you know, talking ball and talking sports. And he just loves that. Still plays a little bridge. Didn't swim today, but is looking forward to. He's going down to MD Anderson Cancer Care in Houston for a checkup, and then he's going to spend some time with his daughter down there. She has a pool. Um, he's looking forward to swimming while he's down there in her pool, and um, good for him. I'm excited for him, and um, it was good to see him. So, anyhow, that's an update for you. Uh, football is right around the corner. Big Ten Media Days, July 23rd and 24th. That's less than two weeks away. Uh, Lovey Training Camp, team. the players report August 2. Uh, first practice open to the public Friday, August 3rd, on the same practice fields they played on east of Memorial Stadium last year. Saw the Performance Center today. Uh, a, a, you know, a girdered structure is absolutely going up. They're making some progress there. And um, and that's good. And that is going to be, the month of August is going to be exciting because there's going to be some terrific position battles. But to watch on a daily basis, Rod Smith, the new coordinator, play caller, quarterbacks coach, working with um, Cam Thomas, A.J. Bush, and all the freshmen is going to be very interesting. Who steps up? Who stays healthy? Hopefully everybody. Uh, all that stuff is going to be worth tracking in the month there and we see you know somebody jump to the front there um, I just would continue to say AJ Bush didn't uh, uh, AJ Bush didn't come here to sit on the bench okay um, AJ Bush um, uh, AJ Bush did not come here to sit on the bench that's what I'm saying fifth year seniors don't do that so um, we'll see what uh, what it looks like but I'm anticipating that he'd be the front runner, but um, we'll see. So anyhow, before I get stuck, and I'm going to try to back out of this mess. Uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here. We'll be back next Tuesday, and uh, we'll talk to you then. So long.